Okay, very good morning, Michael. Welcome to Kuala Lumpur. I think maybe your step of time? Second time. Second time. Second time. Well, we are happy to be here. And here I am today, personally, managed to talk to leader in metro project. <laughs> so, uh, I'm glad to take this opportunity to welcome you. Because I've been reading most of your book. I know you in person from the YouTube. I know you, but you never met me. <laughs> so, the first time that we meet together, how interesting is that? When we talk, it's yeah. fascinating. It's very fascinating. The world is becoming such a, a village. Yeah. It truly really is. Yeah. I find that your session is very interesting because you managed to touch individual interlocutor, individual feeling. You made the whole thing laugh. When you present on your papers on the presentation on the stage, you are able to construct a reality from moment to moment. You bring us to from one position to another. That's why we end up in meta coaching. We end up in patch market. <laughs> so I found that uh, in coaching, it is on your, on your side. You do a lot on patch market. It's very interesting that it is an interest for me to read for them. So can you say something about patch market? So that later on, other coaches should be fully aware of this patch market okay. coach. Well, as, as you know, uh, benchmarking is our way to determine if a person's skill level or where a person's skill level is actually at. So we have behaviors at, at zero, one, two, th and three, and we can see where most of the behaviors are. And, and like a bell curve, um, if most of the behaviors are at level three of competency, when the behaviors drop to less than competency or show some real expertise above, then we can see uh, where a person is operating and what would be the next levels for them to move to. So it gives us some real precision. Uh, is it competent and how do we know? And when we know that, then we'll know what to do to improve, whether to stop doing something that's undermining it or adding other skills that get us up to more elegance. That's wonderful. So this man, benchmarking can be used as a way for you to move forward. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And this is helpful not only to the coaches, to the rest of the people, to put them on time. So as you move along, we are also moving in terms of you become more developed. Especially coaching is more listening, listening skill. And I read there are up to 3.5 of your benchmarking for listening skills. Can you elaborate more on that? What made you say it is at 3.5? It's already at the highest stage of listening skill we have to coach. So we've got 13 listening behaviors. One is looking at the person. Because if I'm, if I'm not looking at you, I'm going to miss a lot of whether you're with me <laughs> yes, yes, yes. or not, or uh, if you're rolling your eyes, it's like, so did I miss something? So, so the skill of even looking, the skill of repeating words, the skill of repeating words over time, tracking a conversation, when we go to the highest levels, I'll do things like inferential listening. So that would be, what you said, there's things implied. And if I can hear that, you didn't say it, but it's implied, then that would be inferential listening. So if you say you want work-life balance, and you talk about work and work, but you never say anything about life, then I would say, I haven't heard that. So I'm listening for what I haven't heard. Good. Yeah, thank you. So you did mention you, you did mention just now, especially on references. Uh, those kind of thing, the course you had a certain tool to be able to use. Because it is not automatic. Because when you say part of racing, the one that you repeat back what was being said and bring it forward. And in IC Advocate, we are not only listening what being said, but what is not being said. So having this tool as a skill for a coach to move forward. What would you advise to the rest of the coaches in the world? What you need for them to do to step up from one stage to the other, other than keep on coaching and practicing? What else that you need to assist? Well, feedback is what helps us to know, and the best feedback is from my client or from really someone um, trained in sensory-based feedback. So, because I don't, I won't know how I'm coming across unless someone gives me some of that feedback. So we always, in our coaching sessions, what was the best thing in the session for you? What do you wish I had done or said that would have been even more helpful? So we're always looking for feedback and it could be it could be recorded or videotaped and then I can watch myself and see 
to what, because my impression of what I'm doing and what I'm actually doing may be very different. Oh, when you see feedback, he recalled to me, I read one of the book, the title is Unleashing Leadership. Because there is no, nothing wrong with the leadership in your book, it's, it's a matter of, there's a missing framework. The missing frame. The missing frame is self-actualization. Can you tell more on that, on the leadership side? Well, self-actualization is you and I actualizing, making real what is possible for each of us. The interesting thing is that that drive is what makes you feel alive, me feel alive when we find it. A leader brings it out in us. Yes. A leader calls it forth. A leader excites us into that vision. So a leader brings out the best in people. That's a self-actualizing leader because a leader is doing that. And then the leader calls for the people to do that. So it's not about bossing. It's not about controlling. It's not about um, um, making people do things my way. It's it's bringing out the best in them. And that's a different definition of leadership. Uh -oh. And I think one the world needs. It's very interesting. Immediately, I recall about what you said the other day, yesterday. What you say, engage, not fully really engage between yeah. leaders and employees. And at first, the behavior of the leader. Second, what the leader should do. That's what you can your book. It involves motivation, how you motivate them. So how you do something that immediately be follow, do it voluntarily, fully accept it, and fully engage in them. My question would be, for the coaches, because they're also leaders, if you were to blend that in total, what else you should encourage them to do? So that you carry the title as a leader, a transformational leader, you yourself should be transformed before you can become transformational. Yeah, I couldn't say it better. Uh, you could, we can't be transformative leaders unless we're doing the transformation ourselves and show, showing, leading the way. So I think what you said is wonderful. And another book, in your book, you wrote about the magics of uh, something magic of uh, words, something like that. Magic. The magic of language. The magical language. The magic of language. Yes, yes. It is in line all the way to what you have done. Why is it you stress on the magic? This was the word that was uh, given by Gregory Bateson yes. in his book uh, Steps to an Ecology of Mind. He said, he said, he said, the way the inner world works, um, it doesn't follow the laws of physics, and sometimes the effect seems like magic, or magical. So when Richard Bandler and John Grinder wrote the first two books, you know, in the structure of magic, it was how does Virginia have a conversation and people just change? How does Fritz Pearls have this conversation? And people seem like magic happened, but there is a structure to it. Yeah, the and way it's how language works. Yeah, the way you're telling me, you, you give me the magic words, <laughs> and I can feel the magic is coming to me. That leads to another question that is bogging in my mind. We, of course, as a normal human being, we are all the time in the flow. We are aware of the environment. As you say, that's not the highest level of the big performance. Things change. In fact, there is actually no problem. The problem is the frames. No, many people are saying that, but they cannot carry the magnitude. What should you, if you advise them so that they should be doing in order for them to be self actualized and really listen? It is only a problem of framing, not a problem of the Well, finding the frames is the challenge, detecting the frames, because we live in it, and, and to be able to step back and to see the frame is the challenge. I can see your frames much easier than I can see mine. You can see mine much easier than I can see yours, which is why we need each other. Yes, sir. It comes to the book that you read about leadership. It is a matter of how to dance. Yeah. Dance in the moment. That's what's better in your book, right? About leadership. So the leader should be able to dance moving forward or backward. As you go along, the leaders follow you, right? Moving the moment. How do you put that in practice here for, for the management? How do they apply this in their organization? Well, so if the frame's the problem, if people are not the problem with the frames, and the frames they have create their problems, helping them find the frames. So I can't stand criticism. No, I just heard a frame. So you can't stand criticism because it means what? Let's yes. say you did get criticism, it would mean what? So those questions begin to find out what the frame means and what the frame is doing. And when a person becomes aware of uh, that frame, then they can begin to have choice. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.